Hello everyone, this is our weekly video about tenses and today we're going to talk about the present indefinite tense. I do insist we do not call it simple because it, there is nothing simple about it. At school we just use the word simple because uh, it makes sense to use a shorter word for little children, but uh, technically the word indefinite means that the tense is not continuous and not perfect, so it describes the category of aspect and the category of time correlation together, right? And this is one of the most difficult tenses in the English language, because it has many meanings, many me three, of he three of its meanings have cases, and uh, there are uh, meanings where it goes into the territory of other tenses, such as the present continuous, the future indefinite, and the past indefinite. So this tense is not simple, it is indefinite. And now let me turn on my presentation. So what we are going to talk about uh, today is that, uh, first of all, uh, this tense is pretty special in the way we built it. The affirmative form of this tense is synthetic. That means uh, that uh, the lexical uh, meaning and the grammatical meaning of the tense are packed into the same form, right? So there is one word and both the lexical and the grammatical meanings are in it. And uh, then uh, if you have a third person singular, if you have, uh, for example, he or she or it, you're going to add uh, the suffix s at the end, one of the few English suffixes. And uh, the rules of its uh, spelling and pronunciation are exactly the same as they were for the plural, right? Then uh, here you see the example, I work, we work, you work, they work, but she works, he works, and it works, right? And uh, then uh, the, another interesting fact is that uh, unlike the affirmative form, the negative and the interrogative forms are analytical. That means that there is an auxiliary verb, and, um, or any sort of auxiliary verb, any sort of auxiliary word, if you speak about not verbs, but some other some other parts of speech. So, uh, in an analytical form, you have one word which takes the grammatical meaning, and another word which takes the lexical meaning, and they are separated, isolated, right? So here, for example, we have uh, the negative form, I do not work, where do is the auxiliary verb, not is the particle, which is negative, and work is the notional verb which has the lexical meaning. And then in the question, in the general question here, do I work? Do is the auxiliary verb, I is the subject of the sentence, and work is the notional verb. So do and work are part of the predicate, and do is uh, the grammatical part, work is the lexical part. This is why we call this form analytical analysis, is division into parts, right? So we divide all the meanings of the form into two parts here, right? And also you can see all the other persons and numbers here. I'm not going to read all of them, right? Then uh, we go move on to meanings. And uh, the present uh, indefinite generally has five meanings. Two of them are paradigmatic. That means that we understand them with very little context. They're traditional, regular, ordinary, standard, we don't have any special conditions to use them, right? Uh, other meanings, free meanings, are going to be syntagmatic. That means that we need special conditions, we need some context to understand them and to use them, right? So this one is paradigmatic. You have a very simple sentence and then you just use it and everybody knows what you mean, right? So the first meaning of the present indefinite is habitual actions or everyday activity. This is this standard case which you study very early at school when you say, I go to school every day. There is a regular action which is repeated for many times in the past, in the present and in the future. And here we have an example, on Sundays we stay at home. So every Sunday this action is repeated. If you draw the timeline, like here on the screen, you can see that uh, this action occupies the area of the past, the present, and the future, and is like a dotted line where you uh, just have uh, 
uh, this action happening systematically, periodically, from time to time, right? Uh, the same uh, thing can be observed in the examples. The Morrisons often go to bed early. The family of Morrisons have this tradition that often they go to bed early. Or Monica can never fall asleep at once. Never is also a regular action, right? She's not asleep all the time. Like every evening he has a problem falling asleep, right? And then you also have a longer example with Mr. Tompkins. Mr. Tompkins wakes up at 7 a.m. He takes a shower, has a cup of coffee, dresses and packs his lunch. This is his morning routine every morning in the past, present and the future. Mr. Tompkins does this routine, right? This is the first meaning, habitual action and everyday activity. Then the second meaning is related. It's also paradigmatic. We also understand it with very little context. A general statement or a universal truth which are a little bit different, but not that much. These are actions which take place all the time, right? If I say that snow melts at the temperature of zero degrees Celsius, today snow melts like that, yesterday snow melted at this temperature, and tomorrow the melting temperature of snow is still going to be the same. This is a permanent fact of life, right? So, uh, snow melts at this temperature. It was true in the past, it is true, it will be true any moment. Of course, you don't uh, need, you need to not to forget that uh, the speaker can lie, right? For example, the second sentence here is that tigers are carnivores and eat meat, which is a universal truth. But I can also lie. I can say tigers are herbivores and they eat grass. It's still the present indefinite in the meaning a general statement or universal truth because the speaker presents it grammatically as if it is a universal truth, right? And uh, if you look attentively at the examples here, some of them are universal truths and some of them are just general statements, right? So water boils at the temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. It's a universal truth. It's true always. Ca tigers are carnivores. That's a universal truth. The sun rises in the east and sets in the west, it's also a universal truth. But then uh, all the sentences like, the Lannisters, the Lannisters always pay their debts, I don't like pop music, does your fiancé speak English? These are general statements. You say something about life. You say that it is true or not true if it's a negative sentence. For example, you say, this uh, box is green, right? That's a general statement about the box, right? Or you say, I... Uh, like music. That's a general statement about your preferences. Or you can say, I speak Chinese. It's your characteristic, your ability, your knowledge, right? You speak Chinese generally as a general statement. Uh, very often uh, some textbooks are going to use the word fact to describe this meaning. I don't like the word fact. Why? Because uh, you see, if I say, if I look at the person and I say, you are smiling, it's also a fact, but I use the present continuous to mean it. Or if I look at my family and uh, you, I ask them, are you hungry? They say, we are not hungry, which is a general statement. Uh, but I can also say that you will be hungry in two hours. And that's a fact, but it's not the present indefinite. So I would be very careful with the word fact, because that's a very general word, right? So the second meaning of the present indefinite is a general statement or a universal truth. The first meaning, if you remember back there, was uh, habitual actions or everyday activities. Now we move on to the complicated meanings, to the free meanings that have special cases. You need extra conditions to be able to use them. So meaning free is the meaning when the present indefinite goes into the territory of a different tense. It goes into the territory of the present continuous, right? The present continuous has the meaning, the moment of speaking, something going on right now. But there are some cases where you can't use the present continuous or you don't have to use the present continuous. And then the present indefinite picks the function to itself, right? So the first case like that is a succession of actions. And... Um, a succession is translated as последовательность действий, and uh, it's often seen in YouTube commentaries, in TV, 
Oh, in scripts, scripts are scenario. And uh, then uh, I will bring you an example. For instance, we watch a YouTube video about cooking, how to cook a sandwich, right? And then there is this person who tells you expertly how to cook a sandwich. And I'm that person and I tell you. So now I'm going to show you how to cook a sandwich. I cut some bread and I spread some butter on it. And now I cut some sausage and I put a piece of a slice of sausage on every piece of bread. Then I take some cheese and I grate this cheese on top of this sausage. And then I close the sandwich with the second piece of bread and I put it into microwave for the second reasons. For, for the second, for, for the 90, se for 90 seconds, right? And uh, then I was showing you all these actions in real time. And that means I don't need to use the present continuous because you already see the actions, right? So I'm going to use the present indefinite to make it simpler, not to repeat the present continuous all the time. It's very similar to the process. Uh, well, it's cool math you studied. I'm going to say that in Russian because you can't explain the unknown through the things you don't remember. Помните, когда вы носили за скобки один и тот же множитель? Там что-то умножить на два умножить на пять плюс три умножить на пять, for instance, and, and then you can just put the five in outside the brackets, right? So it's the similar idea. You put the present continuous outside the sentence because it's absolutely clear it's going on right now, right? So uh, a succession of actions, when you speak about something which is going on, you can see it and you comment on that, right? The second case is uh, with stative verbs, which makes sense because they are not used in the continuous generally, right? And uh, if I, for example, say, I see you, I see you right now, right? Uh, I can't just use the present continuous because the verb see is not used in the continuous form. And that's why uh, I, u I say I see, I understand, I know, I hear some noise outside, I see uh, children playing in the garden, and so on, right? So here you have the typical examples. If you look at uh, the point B, green sentences uh, in the bottom part of the screen, like here, right? So, uh, do you hear the noise right at the moment? Then you say, I don't like the music right at the moment. Don't mix up, I don't like music and I don't like the music. As soon as you have a the definite article, it means some music which is playing right now, right? Then, uh, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from the song. Right now we are standing here singing and we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, right? Or, uh, yeah. th the next example is my favorite, it's from uh, the film uh, Lord of the Rings. If you remember the beginning, in the beginning there is this dark story of the previous events before the film, and then uh, a lady's voice tells the world is changing, the present continuous. I see it in the water, a state of verb. I hear it in the leaves, a state of verb. I smell it in the air, another state of verb. So these three stative verbs actually mean that the character is doing that right now, but you can't use the present continuous because the verbs are not used in the present continuous. Okay, so this was the third meaning, a future action. Oh my God. Yes, an action at the moment of speaking. No, not the future action. I'm sorry, apologize, mistake. So an action at the moment of speaking, and it has two cases to show a succession of actions or with stative verbs. Then, meaning four. Here is the future action I was already thinking of. So, uh, sometimes the present indefinite will go into the territory of the future tenses. But it will happen when you don't need to use future tenses or you can't use future tenses. So, the first and the most important case, which makes, oh my god, Russian native speakers, we make so many mistakes here, awfully, uh, awfully too much. So, uh, an adverbial clauses of time, condition, and concession. Time, condition, and concession means that you have conjunctions like uh, when, before, after, as soon as, if, unless, whatever, wherever, whenever, and so on. And uh, for some reason, native English speakers, they don't use future tenses in these adverbial clauses. Adverbial clauses are 
here придаточные предложения времени, условия и уступки. Кто бы ни, кем бы ни, где бы ни, and so on. So, uh, you see, uh, for instance, if I... Well, let me think about an example. In, if I show you a little bottle and I say that uh, this is poison, если вы выпьете этот яд, the future tense, вы умрете. That's also a future tense. And then uh, you say, if you drink this poison in the present indefinite, not in the future indefinite, you will uh, die, right? So uh, this is uh, an adverbial clause of condition. You don't use future in it. You use the present indefinite instead of the future tense here, okay? I would ask you, is, is that clear? But I'm not going to hear the answer, so I'm just going to go on. And if it's not clear, just watch it again, right? So there are types of sentences where we don't use future tenses. That's it. Then uh, the second case, uh, the condition when we need to use uh, the present indefinite instead of a future action, is when we mean a settled plan, устоявшийся точный план. And normally it is used with verbs of motion, about some sort of transport, like ships, trains, cars, and so on. Or in questions, where people mean that there is a settled plan. For example, if uh, um, trains have timetables, right, and there is a train that arrives at this place uh, every, like, every morning at 5 a.m., I say, the train arrives at 5 a.m., and uh, tomorrow the train arrives at 5, p at 5 a.m. too. So I'm so sure that the train will arrive, I don't even need the future here. It's also uh, true for school timetables. For example, I can say, we have grammar next Monday. And uh, I'm so sure that we are going to have grammar next Monday. I don't use the future, I use the present tense. But it only works that when there is this timetable schedule, some official paper, where you have this uh, uh, times and uh, ideas what is happening at, the, at which point, right? Uh, sometimes people are going to use this uh, creatively. They're going to ask a question as if there is a timetable, as if there is a settled plan. For example, you were driving a bicycle, you were riding a bicycle, and then the bicycle broke and you fell off the bicycle, and now you are standing in the middle of the road, uh, wounded, bleed, blood is over all over the place, and you are standing with this broken bicycle at hands, and you look around and you say, what do we do now? So you ask people with you as if they have a settled plan, what you do in case you have this broken bicycle and an injury, right? But this is rare. Normally it's about trains, planes, ships, and so on, something which has a timetable. The third case uh, is very narrow, very small one. There are three phrases, the verb to see in the meaning присмотреть, проследить, the phrases to make sure and to take care, убедиться и позаботиться. After these phrases, in Russian we use the future tense, which is our tradition, but in English they use uh, the present indefinite tense, which is their tradition, right? So it's not any, it's not logical, it's just traditional, right? And uh, then here we have the examples. Please make sure that the children stay within the garden walls. Пожалуйста, убедитесь, проследите за тем, что дети не выйдут за пределы сада. Or we shall see that the students don't eat all the candy. Мы присмотрим за тем, чтобы студенты не съели все конфеты, что студенты не съедят все конфеты. But the present in the translation. I will take care that the project is submitted before the deadline. Я позабочусь о том, что проект будет сдан до uh, deadline, uh, до крайнего срока. And uh, you see, in Russian you have the future, but in English you have the present. It's just to remember. You don't have any logical reason. Just to remember that to see, to make sure, to take care, never use the future after them. So meaningful was uh, when the, few, the present indefinite occupied the territory of future tenses, right? And there are three cases when it can happen. Logical and meaning five is when uh, the present indefinite occupies the territory of past tenses and denotes past actions. So it's a past action in two cases. First of all, in newspaper headlines, uh, journalists often can create the dynamic effect as if something is going on, is happening, and uh, then they're going to talk about past events in the present tense. 
so uh, for instance our typical example here is um, dog saves two children from fire right in fact uh, the dog saved the two children a week ago but when we write a piece of news about this we're going to use the present indefinite dog saves two children or president arrives in argentina president прибыл в аргентину Austrian minister resigns австрийский министр ушел в отставку government bans smoking in public правительство запретило курить на в общественных местах and then you see in russian you're going to have the past indefinite in english you're going to have the present indefinite to make it more dynamic the second case is natural for all european languages in vivid narration живое повествование uh, speakers often will start speaking in the present about past events uh, for example i can tell you a story in russian and you can see that i'm going to use it in, in, in the present tenses so you say вчера был такой шок Прихожу я домой. I shift it into the present, you see? Прихожу я домой, открываю дверь, включаю свет, а в кресле сидит Джек. So, uh, I shift it into the present as soon as I wanted you to feel captivated with the story. And it's going to work exactly the same way in English. You're going to say, I come home late at night and see someone in the armchair in the dark. I turn on the light and it's Jackie. Where you can say, for instance, uh, yesterday I had a very good mood and I decided to put on my white coat. You can see where the story is coming, right? So I put on my white coat, I go outside, I stand on the bus stop and wait for my bus. And suddenly there is a car, the car passes by and splashes mud from under the wheels on my coat. And that's why I don't have a white coat anymore, right? It's now a gray coat. So I was telling a past story, I started in the past, and as soon as I wanted to make it vivid, I changed it into the present, right? So this is how it works. And uh, this is the last meaning of the, pa of the present indefinite. But there is one more extra case. Now, I told you that uh, the affirmative form of the present indefinite is synthetic. We don't need the auxiliary verb. But we have this auxiliary verb, and we can put it into the affirmative sentence to make it emphatic. And this is called the emphatic do. Emphatic uh, means logically stressed, right? Emphatic. С выражением. So, uh, when the speaker wants to pay special attention to the verb in a very emotional sentence, you can add the auxiliary verb into the affirmative sentence as well. The translation will change. For example, if I say, I appreciate your help, it's a calm, peaceful sentence. But if you say, I do appreciate your help, this is so much more important and sincere. And you say, Я правда ценю вашу помощь. I do like your shirt. Мне правда нравится ваша футболка. I do understand it's difficult. Я понимаю, действительно понимаю, что это сложно. Right? So here you have plenty of examples. You can train stop uh, the video and train translating them, right? And you need to translate with правда, действительно, на самом деле, само собой. So you are going to be emotional here. You can choose to use lexical means, not grammatical means of expressing the same idea. You have all those words like indeed, actually, seriously, truly, certainly, undeniably, all of them, right? And if you have a negative sentence where you already have the auxiliary verb, you can't put one more auxiliary verb into the present indefinite. So you say, we did not see it coming. Indeed. Мы действительно не могли этого предвидеть. Right? Или действительно не ожидали этого. I truly care for your future. Я действительно беспокоюсь о твоем будущем. So you can choose to use lexical means, or you have this grammatical, fancy, interesting means, the emphatic do. Okay? So, this is all about the present indefinite. And um, just to sum up, the present indefinite is a synthetic form in the affirmative sentences and an analytical form in negative and interrogative sentences. It has five meanings. Two of them are paradigmatic and they don't need any extra context. Three of them are syntagmatic, where the present indefinite goes into the territory of something else and there you need special conditions. So the first meaning is habitual actions and everyday activity. I go to school every day. The second meaning is universal truth and general statement. I like music, 
I work at the university, uh, snow melts at the temperature of zero degrees, and so on. The third meaning is when the present uh, indefinite means the moment of speaking, right? Instead of the present continuous, you can have two cases here, a succession of actions when you show, for example, you say, uh, Ronaldo grabs the ball, runs to the goal and scores. And you see it and you comment on that. That's a succession of actions in the present. In the present. Or, alternatively, the third meaning can have a second case when you have stative verbs and you don't use the present continuous with them ever. So this is the meaning like I see you, I hear you, and so on. Then uh, the fourth meaning is uh, a future action. Three cases here. First of all, adverbial clauses of time, condition, and concession. If you watch this video there many years later, you will go nostalgic, right? If is condition, it's an adverbial clause of condition, we can't use the future, use the present tense. Alternatively, you can use the second case. When it's a settled plan, there is a timetable, and you say, oh, my plane leaves in five minutes, I need to hurry up, right? My, I'm so sure that my plane leaves in five minutes because it has a timetable, I use the present instead of the future. Or there are three special verbs to see, to take care, to make sure. After these verbs, you traditionally use the present in English and future in Russian. For instance, you say, please make sure that you remember all the information about the present indefinite. In Russian, we'll say запомните, будете помнить. In English, you use the present indefinite. And the last meaning of the present indefinite is a past action. When we, more, when we want to make the action more dynamic in newspaper headlines, or when we want to make the action, the narration, vivid in the stories, in vivid past stories, right? And also, we don't forget that there is emphatic do, an extra interesting fancy case, how to say indeed without saying indeed. So this is all for today. Uh, thank you for watching this video and see you when we talk about the present continuous. Mm -hmm.